All right, welcome back to Strategy in Small Doses. Oh my gosh, this year is going so, so fast. I cannot even believe that it is almost December. All right, so again, we're always in biz planning mode. Biz planning week is coming up. It starts the 6th. If you've not signed up yet, you still have time. Just go to the show notes, click the link. Oh my gosh, I love, 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 love biz planning week. All right, you can tell, like I literally, the excitement Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, but we're gonna talk about one of the things, again, for those of you um, that are in biz planning mode, and I wanna talk about pivoting your offers, repositioning them, repackaging them. What do I mean? I don't mean going and creating a whole brand new suite of offers. Absolutely not, no, no, no. Get that move, you know, get that out of your head, all right? I'm talking about taking what's working, but maybe it's just a simple place of needing to reposition it, okay? Um, I want to give you an example. I just want to start with an example because I think this is going to be the easiest way. I have a client who is an attorney and she sells legal contracts like templates for contracts and um, NDAs, testimony release, podcast guests, like the contracts you need as a business owner to protect your brand, to protect your business. All right. And it just was falling, like it just wasn't feeling as exciting as it should for her right like it was just like something was off about it all right things weren't like felt like we were talking about the same thing over and over and so she had her packages um set up in like different bundles that you could buy the contracts based on the title that you give yourself so whether or not you're a coach whether an independent contractor or service provider whatever okay but one of the things that came up when i was working with another client was like okay, here's the program I'm offering, or here's what I'm getting ready to launch, here's my new service, what what contracts do I need in place to protect this? And like I was on her, and we couldn't figure it out, right? We're just, we're not attorneys. So I talked with the client, and we are, we decided to completely, not just to rebundle the contracts based on what people are launching, right? So like if you need it, if you're launching a course, you need this, this, and this contract. If you're launching, um, a one-to-one -one service, you need this, this, and this, okay? So it's very easy, and it made it easier to understand, easier for the end user, easier for the client. And so this is a great example of what I mean by repositioning your offers, repackaging them. We did not change anything. None of the contracts are changing. Nothing is new. We didn't create anything new. It wasn't a new business model. The only thing that we were doing is changing how we market them, all right? And so sometimes that's all you really need. And I want you to look at, like, do your offers need a little bit of a pivot? it based on your industry so like two years ago when she started or three years ago when she started the business everything it was based on like if you're an independent provider and it was title based right now everybody's moved into these packaging and different business models and so everything is based on business model so it made more sense to reposition them and package them based on business model so Again, like think about your offers and think about do they need just a slight pivot? Do they need just a slight repackaging and how you present them in the market you, you bring them to, but they're not really changing, okay? That could be a huge, huge um, advantage to you. It can create a new excitement. It's almost like a rebrand, a relaunch, like it's brand new for people and so you can you can really do a lot with that. And so I would really encourage you to kind of look at your offers and just think like, is you're in biz planning mode, if you're in reflection mode, like look at your current offers, look at the current, your current market, look at the industry, look what people are asking you for. Go back on your like, go back and look at all the clients you've had to the up to this month, like up to this point. Like, did they come to you because they were looking for something specific or was it more based on their needs, right? So a lot of times I think we, like, it's based on here's what here's what we know you need and here's how it's gonna be positioned. But the client knows what they think, right? Or what they want. So make it easy for your client to understand it. Just look at the data and see what's selling the best and how you can capitalize on that and make it better. You know, another example I would give um, is another client who had both a full day and a half day VIP day. The half day, if we look at historically, the half day sells much better. And some of that is because the reason the half day sells better in her market and in her industry is because it's a very, it's tech, right? It's tech based. And so a full day of tech, a lot of times is too much for people. Like they don't know what they, they 
they know an immediate need. Like, I need this to link with this. I need this set up and this to automate, right? Like, they're not thinking about their entire business where a full eight hours of tech is needed. They're coming multiple times for these little half days or mini strategy sessions because it's like they only can think about one thing in that moment, what they need in that exact moment. And so serve the client where they're at, right? Like it didn't change what she was doing, her business model. It didn't matter. Like it didn't matter to her whether she was doing half hour, you know, half days or full days. She was booking just the same, making the same amount of money. So looking at that, and so we just repositioned it. We really don't even offer or you know, promote the full day anymore. It's in her back pocket. I call them back pocket offers. They're in her back pocket, but she doesn't really talk about them much because everybody needs, the industry is needing like this immediate thing done. Like I only need this one little piece, you know, because overwhelmed because we don't know what we don't know and like tech is overwhelming. So look at your offers and look at your industry Go back on all of your clients. Look at the language they used when they came to you. Look at the language they use when they're talking to you about their issues or their problems. Like, think about that and look and see if you just need to pivot your offer slightly to accommodate for that. All right, I'll talk to you soon. And don't forget, Biz Planning Week starts December 6th. Click the link in the show notes, go into the Facebook group, but be there. I'm telling you, and it now includes like all these quarterly check-ins. Did I even tell you guys this? That like, now, because one of the things that I see, again, I'm doing the same thing, pivoting my offers. I've run this offer four years in a row, pivoting it to based on the market. What I'm seeing because of the world we're living in and this craziness is that it's really, really important to kind of reflect quarterly that once a year is not really enough. We need to be really, really planning quarterly at this point because that's all we can look ahead at is the quarter or 12 weeks, however you want to break it down but looking at it in more of 12 week increments and then actually doing the check-ins. So this year, the biz planning program includes those quarterly check-ins. It'll include a training based on the industry and the market. It'll include the reflection piece of what you should be looking at based on which quarter you're in and which things you should be planning ahead for, or looking at, yada, yada, yada. So it's that that is a huge, huge, huge add-on this year that I cannot wait to actually execute in 2022. But it's all part of the navigate your 2022 biz plan link in the show notes. I'll see you there. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.